Hi. Ed here again with Ed's Two Cents Worth. This is part two of our garden tractor uh, build of a loader on a garden tractor and it doesn't really matter whether you're dealing with a Cub Cadet or John Deere or something else. Uh, the ideas, uh, that's what I'm trying to present here is ideas, uh, not a how-to video, but to kind of inspire you that it is first off possible to do this and that uh, maybe some of the things you'll see that I do will give you ideas as to what you can do or maybe you can improve upon something I did. Whatever the case may be, the whole idea of this is to inspire. So I'm going to grab the camera and I'm going to do a walk around here and then we'll get into some specifics about things that I encountered and did in order to uh, bring this project together. And uh, the next part is going to be a performance part. And I have, uh, of course, I think you can see um, that the tractor is complete at this point. There's still some things I want to do to it, but uh, it's usable at this point. And um, the performance video, I think you're going to see that this build has been uh, quite effective. So, in any case, let me grab the camera and we'll do a little walk around. So, just let me start her up here for a second. <laughs> Okay, so some things I think you'll see immediately are a little bit unique on this tractor. Uh, for one thing, this spring, this support here. I'll explain that a little bit later. In fact, I'm going to do a separate video as to how to build one of these very simply. And uh, it may be something that you can use on your own project. And I'll explain why it's needed on this particular tractor. So, quickly here, you can see an overview. This platform here is for ballast weights. And you'll see that in the performance test. Now here you can see the hydraulic pump. This is a counterclockwise pump. It's a six gallon per minute pump. And uh, it's uh, very nice for this size tractor. If you're working on something bigger and uh, wanted to have more or less reserves of uh, hydraulic um, motion, then a bigger pump would be appropriate. But this is uh, really a, uh, an appropriate size pump for this tractor. It does a very nice job. And uh, you can see that the, the PTO, the rear PTO coming out of the transmission, and uh, it, it drives the pump. On this tractor, we're turning this way. So when you're looking at the pump from the front, this way would be clockwise. So I had to get a counterclockwise pump in order to turn with the tractor. Here's my suction hose, my pressure line, and they go up to feed the spool valve and from there out to the cylinders. I apologize for this tractor being dirty but I've been working on the performance video and uh, uh, gathering some uh, video there. Haven't compiled anything yet but uh, just kind of gathering the video. Hydraulic cylinders. These cylinders are 14 inch stroked, two and a half inch bore. They are 
uh, cylinders that I got from Surplus Center, which is an awesome place to buy hydraulics, especially if you're looking for deals on cylinders and fittings. Uh, excellent, excellent prices. And I put a link to this in part one so that you could go and see for yourself about those cylinders. Now here, you see this tank is a temporary tank. I'm going to have to build a metal tank, but this tank allows me to have assembled this quickly and uh, get it running, and that's what I wanted to do. So in a future project, I'm going to build a tank that uh, will be made of metal rather than the plastic. Here you can see the spool valve. This is a four position with a single joystick. My supply line coming in, my return to my tank, my lines going out to supply the cylinders. Uh, I find that using PVC makes for a nice closable using a clamp and mountable holder for the hydraulic lines. You can see it down there as well. And up here, this can actually slide a little bit here as needed. Also giving it support up there close to the cylinder. As for the bucket, you can see the bucket, and we'll talk about some specifics about this bucket as we go on. 42 inches long. It's appropriate size for the tractor. It is basically the same width across as the rear wheels. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the spool valve. I purchased it on eBay. Uh, it was about $59, $60 for the valve. It was, uh, I bought it for price. Um, I bought these over the years, either on Amazon or eBay. Uh, so I was comfortable in doing it. It was, it's a Chinese built spool valve, but it works very well. Uh, out of many that I have bought over the years, I had only one that I needed to return. It, it was shipped out to me and it was in a stuck situation and I didn't want to go in and rebuild it. I just returned it and have them, had them sent me another one. But uh, these uh, Chinese spool valves are dependable. They work and uh, that's what this is. Uh, e very economical to purchase. Uh, one thing I want to mention is chances are if you buy one of these uh, spool valves from China, it's going to come with BSPP fittings. Now that's a British pipe thread. Now what is really nice about that is if they show that the spool valve has either half inch or three quarter inch BSPP fittings, then you can use NPT fittings, the National Pipe Thread, here in America, you can use the equivalent uh, fitting for that. So what this is, is, see this is the factory uh, port here. This one's closed off, but this and this is the, exactly the same size. And uh, all I had to do was put the NPT adapter in it. I adapted down to quarter inch. There's no reason why you really need to be over a quarter inch on a tractor this size unless you're using extremely large cylinders and I don't know why because you're overkilling the cylinders to the size of the tractor so um, quarter inch is adequate 3 8 tops but in any case I would need to adapt this down to either quarter inch or 3 8 so the NPT fitting worked on all of these okay so I was able to take the half inch fittings uh, from BSPP and use half inch NPT adapters 
to get down to my sizes that I want to get to. Now you notice uh, also too, I have a little bit of galvanized fittings in here. Um, when you're running hydraulics, um, these are of course not really built for um, hydraulic pressures in the sense that they can take uh, many, many, many thousands of pounds. I'm only running a thousand pounds on this tractor. I have two and a half inch cylinders which when you do the math on that, that is the equivalent. If you take a two and a half inch bore, uh, it calculates out to be just under five square inches. Okay. So if I'm putting a thousand pounds into my cylinder here times five, that's 5,000 pounds that's pushing on this rod. Okay. So, for this size tractor, that is overkill. There's no need for me to run higher pressures. Okay? The pump can handle the volume at higher pressures. The valve, built for 3,500 pounds. The cylinders are built for 2,500 pounds. If I ran this at 2,500 pounds, I'd be putting 12,500 pounds of pressure on this rod pushing it out no need to run that on a tractor this size so you can run 800 pounds 1000 pounds 1200 pounds on your tractor build and have plenty of pressure even on a two inch cylinder so let's talk about some other things Okay, so there's something I want to show you about the bucket. In my building, you'll be able to see this easier. They're, they're painted black now, but you can see these two pockets here. Here. And here. You can get a better look at them. Here during the manufacture process, you can see the inside there where the pockets stick into the inside. And then on the back side, you can see them better. And what those are for is they allow the bucket to come up, way up. Watch what the bucket does. See how it fits in? Okay, now, if I had positioned my pivot point different on the bucket, if I had to bring this pivot point down here, this wouldn't have been necessary for me to do. But uh, I changed my mind in mid-core from go having my pivot point really low to up here. Exactly why, I really can't remember what the reason was, but I did. And so that meant I needed to compensate here and, and give this opening. So I just built those pockets in there to allow that. Okay, now I'd like you to see, in regards to this spring mechanism here, what's happening. This is a cradle here that supports the cylinder. They're not connected together. The cylinder just rests in that cradle. Okay? But watch as I change the position of the, the bucket and the uh, spring. So you see what what is wanting to happen here is this is coming down and, and starting to change direction. If I left this without the spring, when I go back to extend the, the cylinder, it would push this bucket further 
in, a, in, in the wrong direction. So what the spring does is I apply pressure here and pushes the cylinder upward, allowing me to restore the direction of this joint. very smooth operation with it but without it this joint would bind when I pull this cylinder all the way in because of the unique construction of this tractor um, I found it necessary to run my supply line coming out of my tank coming down here now this is low pressure line and I ran it through a PVC conduit attached it with clamps oops I got clamp I forgot to tighten up anyway and it comes out to the back side that conduit offers protection comes out the back here the conduit protects it from the three-point hitch as this lifts up and it goes into the pump now part three is going to involve performance recently I cut down this large pine tree and I used this tractor to clean up the mess so I hope that you're going to want to see part three because not just uh, this test, but other tests were put onto the tractor. We'll see how it does. So thank you for watching. I hope uh, it was encouraging to you, inspiring to you. And please click that like button and I hope you'll subscribe as well. Thank you so much for watching.